All right, thought it would be a good time to do a quick update. I don't know if you can see here, but we actually replaced uh, both of the plates that were previously plastic with aluminum. So, uh, uh, spoiler alert, I've done a bunch of test cuts and it is much better than plastic, no big surprise there. But thought it would make sense to continue doing kind of characterization tests to understand what the differences in spring constants are. So this is the same test as before, um, using a you know force gauge. Uh, I will be applying 50 newtons to the various bits of the mill to see how much they flex. Um, first test is going to be on the Z assembly, you know the Z column. It is decoupled from the X and Y stage. The indicator is mounted to those goes through the granite plate and up into the steel upright. Um, they should be decoupled, meaning when I pull on this, um, the force basically has no easy load path all the way to here. So if I'm, if I'm pulling on this, it shouldn't also be twisting this. I'm making some assumptions there, but they're assumptions I'm comfortable making. Um, in the first direction uh, here, I'm gonna be pulling basically in what is the uh, X direction. The thought here, like, Nothing of this assembly has changed, so this should just validate the results. I should, I'm expecting to get the exact same result to the last time, um, because I have not really changed this assembly at all. I'll do the same thing, I'll do some measurements, swap it out, get two directions, then switch to actually measuring this axis, which is the one that I expect to have changed significantly. So, start with the kind of validation. So that there is 50 newtons. Looks like we're still in the three or four thousandths range for deflection, which I believe is the same as it was last time. I'll swap this out and we'll get a quick reading from this other direction. So again, now I'm pulling in what is the Y direction. This will be another 50 Newtons. And again, this appears to be moving less than half a thousand. So this 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 direction is still much more rigid, but you know, you gotta kinda resolve for what is your weakest component in the assembly. I can't I can't only take cuts in the Y direction. That wouldn't make very much sense for a CMC mill. So here I'm going to swap these guys out again. So I'm going to put this guy put it over here last time. Uh, and the goal is to get a measurement on this screw over here. This one I can cheat just a little bit. Since I have control over this axis. But if I'm a little too close. I think I'm bottoming out there. So. So again, I'm going to do 50 newtons here. And this is the one that I expect to have changed significantly. So I will apply 50 newtons. And that is 50 newtons. Looks like that is in the like I don't know, 5 thousandths. And it looks like I am moving. I have about a thou of backlash in there. Um, and I can try to find what that might be if I do a little bit of an assembly look. Um, there are some components in here that are still plastic, so I have a feeling those are the ones that are kind of springing up and taking the load. Um, and I'll, I'll do some 
measurement accuracy tests. Uh, I'll cut some shapes that I have the expected CAD dimensions for, and uh, I'll go back. So about a thousandth of backlash here. In 50 newtons. Uh, that's about four thousandths. If we include the backlash. If we don't include the backlash, it's three thousandths. That is much better than the seven that we were seeing last time. Uh, and then final adjustment here. I'm kind of in. Let me replace this. And run more into it. Does that still show up on the video? Kind of. So again, same test, apply 50 newtons, I'll try to watch it as well this time. So that there is 50 newtons. This looks like it's somewhere in the two to three thousandths range, so I'll move it. And that is 50 newtons. That looks like it's somewhere in the two thousandth range. So I have a feeling there is some backlash in this y-axis, and I can try to chase that out. As is, there's about a thousandth. Um, this one it looks like the this particular axis has less backlash. So I'll go through the assembly and see if I forgot to forgot to tighten a screw or something simple. Um, but that's where it stands. So it's a lot more rigid. Um, I'll show in a more up close video, but the surface finish has improved dramatically. I can take a cut that is much, much more aggressive. So kind of as expected, aluminum is better than plastic, but it's kind of cool that you can make all of your aluminum plates with the plastic plates. So if you have a 3D printer, you know, the, the whole idea here is kind of, you can just build this mill and then use the mill to improve, improve its performance. Um, in terms of next steps, I can move the camera here, but up here, I'm actually having some, I have some plastic parts and I'm starting to see signs of wear on them. Uh, so those are probably the thing I'll start milling next, and maybe I'll make some cool uh, aluminum milling videos just to show this mill kind of in action, because I haven't done that yet. Um, and I'll also, I'll, I have some videos of me cutting plastic, kind of at the highest uh, rates that I could get working, and I'm going to do the same with aluminum to kind of show the difference. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.